So we need different rotations, whether we're tilting to launch the ball or not tilting to compress it, or we need to rotate this way to, you know, to shift low point. You find iron players, some players rotate really hard, so they, they create ground force to help rotate. Um, and that's been a game changer. That sort of leads on to the, I'll say one question I had, um, was how can the uh, like ground reaction force influence the talk? And why is that important for you or for the people that will listen to this? So effectively, so we, we, we ro objects rotate about their center, the center of mass or balance points where all forces equal out. So if, we, if I asked you to lay down and I picked you up, you know, and I held you above if I could, held you above my finger like that, you'd be balancing, I'll be, I'll be, you'll be resting on, uh, this finger will be uh, below your center of mass. And all objects rotate about their center of mass. So we need to turn, we need to rotate, we need to get our pelvis open at impact ideally. Um, we need to create tilt and we need to move out of our address position posture, go into a side tilted position on our backswing and then start to exchange the tilts in the other way. Um, so we need to tilt our body this way. So I always use the, the kind of the famous frisbee. This is that, you know, if I place this here, you know, if I want to launch the ball, get my low point behind and then rise up to hit the ball. So let's say attack, I've got to, I've got to create a force, a ground reaction force that's going to help me turn this wheel. So that might be a, a vertical force coming up through my body that's going to help me turn it this way, as you see it kind of anti-clockwise. Or it might be a force I'm pushing away from my trail side now and I'm creating a force, a ground reaction force in this direction. So I've kind of got this. Always describe, you know, my, you know, me and my wife, we push our children around on the merry-go-round. She's one side of the merry-go-round pushing it. So that would be the trail foot kind of pushing back and the ground reaction the other way. So I'm now pushing the wheel this way, the merry-go-round. So effectively, that would be your left foot pushing forwards and the ground reaction force pushing back so now we're turning this your pelvis open um and that was kind of a big game changer for me when i started to understand this stuff this one when i started to i did a little study last year and i was in communication with steve all the time and he was giving me some feedback from some of his database as well that we found out that an early extender was pushing too much every early extender that i checked i was frantically going through that is it that one is that one? yeah we've got something here that you know, the, the goal for the, the early extender is somebody that pushes excessively back through their trail foot. So the ground reaction force is thrusting their right hip forwards, but they're not very good at pushing forwards through their lead foot to open the lead side of the pelvis up. Right, okay, yeah. So you've got this all this energy going into the pelvis to, to push this side. So this is mummy pushing the merry-go-round, mm -hmm. but daddy's not pushing it back this way. Yeah. So it's all good, but what happens is the centre of the pelvis wants to thrust forwards and the body wants to go towards the ball. And then we know the golfer wants to stand up. There's lots of things that happen because of that as a consequence. But it's because the lead foot is not two times or one and a half to two times more forceful in opening up the lead side of the pelvis and pushing that force up through the, the hip joint. Um, so and that, that was kind so of, that, that push, was a revelation. That push, like you say, where it looks like all players early extend in the hips is okay yeah. if you've got the one and a half, two times going the other way in the lead. Freeze a little bit. Sorry. Yes, absolutely. Sorry, you froze a little bit there. Yeah, um, I, it's my I, up here, but... I, I don't try and reduce what the trail foot is doing because that is still going to be 30% of the power. So we don't want to turn that. What the, the golfer to do is try and turn that into 40 or 60%. So try and get more forceful by pushing back even harder you know, to try and get that, the, to, to, to move the pelvis around is actually the key is to actually teach the golfer how to get one and a half to two times more force through. And I, I describe it, if you had like a big shoe, so if you were size six, I put you in a size 12 shoe, what you need to do to slide your foot to hit the front of the shoe. Yeah. Okay. So once it hits the front of the shoe, 
reduced grip to the ground, there's a reaction. The body, yes, there's an intention. There's a firing of the muscle and lever in the limb, right? There's an intention to move, of course, because force doesn't make you move. You still need to do it. Um, but it's energy into the system. So you teach them how to create that energy and get that force from the lead side. Um, and I use the leaderboard or this Frisbee, for example, I get a Frisbee like this and I put it under their left foot. And I just like I'm doing now, I put it on the floor and I'm just sliding my foot forwards and backwards okay, you're like to it. get them understanding. That's the direction of the foot, the foot, then the ground reaction. And then I put that up against the wall. So I start with their foot a couple of inches away from the wall, butt the Frisbee up against the wall and then say, right, I want you to rotate your left side as far back as you can. Push, push your left hip behind you as much as you can and rotate your pelvis open um and that's why when they try and do that to start with sorry that's why still with the up against the wall and they're doing that opening the hip with their foot still on the frisbee yeah Definitely. foot against the frisbee butted up against the wall now they've hit it they've got a force that comes up is now hit them and it wants to go up through their yeah. body their intention is to rotate their pelvis open so they rotate their pelvis as much as they can lead side, get it open. Um, and it's a, it's, it's a game changer. And I mean, golfers that I get to do that, I use the leaderboard, the foot, the, the platform, I switch it round. My mate Todd Adcock was the first one that I called it the toddy drill. Yeah. He was pushing that, that uh, leaderboard forward it, yeah. through the lead foot. And I saw it absolutely genius. Um, that effectively they the 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 early extender the first time they do it they they stumble off because they're pushing their right foot so hard because that's what they've taught themselves to yeah. do since day one get the energy from the trail side so they want to they fall off the board so they step off stumble right get back on and then you get them to hold the trail side back to be less forceful but to be more forceful through yeah. the lead side and then that starts there and then it's a game changer because once they learn that move they then can manoeuvre the lead side of the pelvis and really sort of rotate it around. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's huge. And, you know, posturally as well, if we're, if we're wanting to, if we're wanting to maintain our posture, if I hold this like this, yeah. okay, create excessive force, my body wants to tilt over more and vice versa. If I create excessive force in this direction around my centre of mass, I want to stand up. So the early extender is creating this, this force this way and then getting this in this direction and rotating about the centre of mass in this plane. Yeah. So that, where that can be quite deadly, that side. But vice versa, if I create, you know, lead side, that's creating more of this, right? So, you know, we've got to get that balance right on backswing that we're not changing our incline too much. Downswing, there might be a bit of a squat move going on, so we might lower our height relative to the ground. It all depends on the golfer. Yeah. Um, and then there's going to be some change sort of post-impact. The body's going to start to move back up again as this, this torque starts to change. Um, it's just all about rotations in whatever plane. Um, and I kind of now look at a golf swing and I look at it in 2D and I, I might see something happening in 2D. And then I... I stop now at that point and I'm like, okay, or pelvis rotated enough, you know, on their backswing. I'm then looking at P2. That's the point where the force really needs to be um, peaked to get that movement. Force precedes the motion. Right. So, you know, I'm looking at, right, I'm, uh, four is the consequence of, of a good two. So if they're creating enough forward to backwards force, that means they can rotate their pelvis more. They, that energy is going to be in the system at P2 to then be able to get open, you know, to rotate that way, rotate close, you want to call it, on the way back and get more depth. Um, or P5 is the other. I suppose you'll see that force proceeding in the backswing and, I guess, transition where you'll see the force change and then the camera or what you see on visually happen as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, we see it every day with recreational golfers, right, they move, mass is moving at the start, mass keeps moving all the way. They get to P4, mass is still moving, right? Yeah. So it, four is the consequence because they've not created a force to push their mass back. So that golfer now, whereas I put my hand up and I used to try and stop that golfer moving completely two years ago, I was one for 
would stop the motion completely right. and that would affect it might improve the strike with the irons but it will slow them down dynamically with the driver because it starts to change the way that they kind of lever the torque wheels I so what i say the now, long drive stuff I, is what you said about the long drivers getting about seven inches bit that way yeah seven inches they they move but it's all done by p2 that's the thing okay you can move off the ball as long as it's done by two Okay, the longest players in the world move off by two, depending on what shot it is. It might not be as much. I'm not saying that the long, the best iron shot is to move seven inches yeah. off. Far from it. I see my fastest tall players that are very strong with their irons and hit it a long way, may move two inches to the right, to the trail side. But by the time they get to the top, they're only one or even center. Yeah. And then they can have that ash shift to help the pressure move to the lead side. And then their mass is ahead of centre. By the time they get halfway down, they're ahead of centre. That's great for a down and left swing. Yeah. But with drivers, they tend to want to hang back a bit more because they've got this one degree thing that they want to try and launch, uh, create some launch angle with it. So they're going to have to have some tilt and some lean back um, to get that low point where it needs to be. It could be six inches behind the ball because there's an upward angle that's coming up to hit the ball. Um, otherwise, they never get one degree lofted club um, to get the ball to go in the air. No, something else. So it's kind of. Sorry, go on. No, I say no, I totally agree. And the um, that difference with the drives and the irons is is massive. We don't, like I say, recreational golfers, you don't really get that difference enough. No, I would say they tend to. If we take our weekend warrior, it's the same fault all the time. It's not the seven inches. It's the fact that they've done it all the way to P4. Yeah. That's it. It's not the seven inches. You know, they could have the seven inches at two and there's still players that can recenter by four. If yeah. they create enough right left force at two, that mass will want to move back to center if it's their intention to do so. Yeah. So it's, that's not the, the problem here. And, you know, we look at, I mean, there's lots of players over the years and even probably arguably the best driver of the modern era, Rory, and his, and his movements kind of in takeaway. You know, there is that little bump of the, the, the mass towards the trail side. But then there's a right-left force that's kind of ramping up to stop it from moving and start to either recenter it or push it forwards of centre. So right. it's just get it done early so you can get back to center or some amount forward early. Absolutely. And I don't knock any models at all. You know, if 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 the model is to stay centered, okay, which is we know is a is is a is a brilliant model for specific shots, especially with low point control and, and being able to go down and swing, get the swing direction left and match it all up for a zero path. Yeah. You know, it's a, it, it's then it's a case of okay, if you want to stay centered, you just got to create right left force really early to keep you in the center. So you know, you can use force plates to to coach any particular model for any shot. Just got to kind of just look at the timings of things, and then you know, if it's if you want that at four, think two to be where the push is starting to happen to get you to that position at P four. Um, so just finally, what's the biggest difference you see? You've sort of covered it anyway between the, the longer drivers and then the, the amateurs, the higher handicappers. OK, um, shifting and shifting early. Fine. Brilliant. Get, get done early. That's it. Timing. Okay, Don't like be afraid it. a lot of it. Just get it done early. And then get back to where you want to be or where, you know, where your model is, where you see yourself, get back to where you need to. That dynamic motion changes, that helps you shift pressure. It will change velocities. It really is a very powerful movement if you can have side to side. It's a force, it's a lateral force or a linear force that you're creating to go side to side. It's a very, very powerful force, so don't turn it off.